popular, entertaining, and powerful. The word powerful might best sum up the topic of this video, because football has the power to partially stop the conflict. Here are four times football has contributed to stopping wars. Number one, it's October 2005 in Sudan. Immediately after helping Cote d'Ivoire qualify for their first World Cup, Didier Drogba kneeled in front of his supporters. The Ivorian kneeled to call for reconciliation within his country, which had been divided in two since 2002. While the most violent fighting quickly went quiet, tensions still remained very high. After the match, a camera crew went into the locker room and Drogba took the microphone. Men and women of Cote d'Ivoire, today we prove that all Ivorians can live together and play together with a common goal. Today we're begging on our knees. A country with so much wealth shouldn't devolve into war. Put down your weapons and organize elections. October 2005 was a turning point for Cote d'Ivoire. Drogba went from sporting hero to political hero. Nothing happens overnight. Drogba didn't single-handedly stop the war, but he did lend a helping hand. His speech brought two conflicting parties to the negotiating table, when before, no middle ground had been found. Number 2. In the 60s, Santos and their superstar Pele were a huge attraction. The club had even made a habit of organizing international tournaments. In February 1969, Santos traveled to Nigeria, which at the time had been fighting a civil war for two years. But Pele's arrival may have temporarily halted the conflict. For 48 hours, Nigeria and its separatist region of Biafra agreed to a ceasefire so that everyone could see the living legend. 25,000 people apparently went to admire King Pele. And immediately after Santos's departure, the conflict may have resumed. According to Gilmar and Coutinho, shots could be heard from the plane. But this story of a ceasefire is subject to controversy even today. Yes, uh, a bit like the Brazilians uh, 1,000 goals. <clears throat> yeah, anyway, some sources suggested that the ceasefire may have lasted for two weeks afterwards, while others say that there wasn't a ceasefire at all. Santos's official site is clear and has no doubts, just like its historian. In under 10 days, the club interrupted conflicts between the Republic of Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the war between Biafra and Nigeria. There was no point in these countries continuing to fight while Santos were there. Number three. Pele also says that he contributed to a ceasefire in Gabon, an unforgettable peace effort for him. There was a civil war in Gabon. They told us, you can't go there, there's a war. Omar Bongo was the president at the time. He said, we'll stop the war because we want to see Pele. The president stopped the war. It was fantastic. Number four. The First World War was a traumatic event. But in the middle of the horror of the Great War, an ounce of hope appeared on December 25th. 1914. The Germans and the English may have temporarily decided to put an end to the atrocities to play a football match. The story goes, the Germans won 3-2. The legend of this Christmas Day match in 1914 is well known, and it was even adapted into a film. But many historians, lacking evidence, doubt the existence of this match. Did it really happen? However, some witnesses have backed up this story. We made the goals with our caps. The teams were quickly formed for a match on the frozen mud, and the Fritz beat the Tommies 3-2. Despite the doubts, UEFA erected a monument on the presumed location in memory of this peaceful meeting in 2014. Exactly 100 years later, whether we are to believe it or believe in it, the story is such an inspiration that it should never be forgotten. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave us a like and please subscribe to the channel. Now, the voice is yours. Give us your ideas for new videos in the comments.